Hi, I'm Sandy Bird, CTO of Q1 Labs, and here today to show you the uh, QRadar Security Intelligence Platform, which includes the QRadar SIM and the Risk Manager product. We'll start off today looking at the, uh, the dashboard and the main interface when you enter the product. This is really giving you a high-level overview of everything that's going on in the environment, and a typical operator would log in here to see the critical things they need to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's a, a new risk being exposed in their environment or a critical issue that's being escalated that should be investigated or some sort of a policy compliance issue they need to address. Today we're going to start with looking at the risk management side of the product and locking back to the security intelligence timeline. This is really where you want to start to uh, build up a, a topology of your network, understand how your network's connected. And by doing that, we can start to model the network to understand where your risks and vulnerabilities are. And the risk manager product does that by collecting configuration from devices. So actually going and taking the underlying configurations, building up a normalized config from those devices. You know, many of us have uh, looked at many router configs before. They probably look a lot like that. We take those and normalize them like we do log data so that they look into a, like a much more human digestible version of access controls. You can see here we've got data center access lists permitting, you know, certain protocols going from one network range to another network range on a certain port. All of that information is normalized. That's what actually goes and builds up the underlying topology. Once that's done, it allows the policy monitor section of Risk Manager to pose questions to that model to understand where are those key risks. We can do things, simple things. We all know that client-side vulnerabilities are a, a key topic today that we all have to deal with. If we just go and search for all client-based vulnerabilities in this network, though, we'll end up with a lot of vulnerabilities. You know, in your own networks doing scans, you'll probably end up with um, hundreds of different client-side vulnerabilities, and you wouldn't be able to actually go and necessarily get all of those patched. And even when you're getting all your Windows patches in, sometimes you're not getting some of the application patches and, and things of that nature. So you end up with a lot of these. However, when we look across the organization, we can start to filter that by saying, well, if it's a client-side vulnerability, how many of these maybe talk to untrusted networks, or how many of them talk to the Internet? When we submit those types of questions against the model, we end up with far fewer uh, issues that we have to go deal with. But we can even get more specific in our questions, even to the point in saying, well, which ones of those addresses maybe talk to suspicious addresses or have critical data installed on them, to the point that you get down to just a few critical issues that you need to solve. The system then allows you to build basically a process around that where there will always be exceptions, so you can go in and approve the selected ones, give it a good reason why that is. And once you have your, your system set up so that you've dealt with all the given risks, you've accepted those risks, you can put it in monitor mode. And basically now, if anything changes in the environment or the threat posture changes uh, in the world, it can basically alert you to those risks, um, just like it would any other incident inside your security information management system. So it gives you a quick idea of the risk manager side of the product. Taking a look more towards the, um, the exploit side or the incident side when something has happened. So now you're talking about correlation of multiple log sources and application data and network data and bringing that into a what we call an offense, which is basically a collection of um, log data, network context data that's all been correlated together to represent a problem that's happening. We can now start to dive into these. And again, we rank those by something called magnitude, which is basically made up of how um, severe the given incident is. You'll see things on top here where machines are being exploited or we've got, you know, uh, a machine connecting to a known botnet control channel, something pretty serious. Um, the things that are much less than mundane in the network, maybe you've got, um, you know, so a few failed logins followed by success from somewhere and you want to investigate that. So again, just different levels of, of uh, severity to the underlying incidents that are happening. Let's take a look at one of these quickly just to see what's inside of the offense. This is one where we have a, a pretty well-known issue. Uh, we have a, a machine inside the network connecting to a known control channel, um, something we would want to investigate. One of the great things about the security information platform is that it's actually starting to correlate this with a lot of other sources. This information is probably coming from some network context information. We can actually drill into the flows here and see that, yes, we can see the communications to these given networks. We can actually drill in on any one of them, look inside the content. Again, using the QRadar QFlow collectors, we're able to actually look at the payload inside of the packet so you can see what's going on there. And that's a a key differentiator in actually doing forensics. It's nice to be able to get into that level of detail to rather prove or 
disprove whatever you're seeing from an incident. But we're also seeing here that we're taking identity information. We know in this particular case that Jeremy is logged into this particular IP address at the time this happened. We can see his MAC address, and we get that by correlating data from things like DHCP logs, identity information sources, um, you know, Windows Active Directory, things like that, to link all that information together. So now I can pick up the phone, I can call Jeremy and say, Jeremy, why don't we clean your machine up since you have a problem? So it allows you to get all that information just in this one screen very, very quickly. Now, if we look at some other incidents, they may, be, they may start out being something that's quite simple. We have a, an issue with some data going across MSN Live. Okay, it's a simple little thing. Maybe it's not a serious issue. We can see it's Philip that's actually causing us at this given point in time. But it's been correlated to a couple database incident events as well. So let's just go in and take a look at those events really quickly. And we see here that, um, you know, basically Philip's gone. He's got uh, an Oracle here, succeeded login to the Oracle database, but he logs in as Scott. And that's suspicious in some way, so we decide we want to do a little more forensics on this. Maybe we want to look at what else this IP has done. So it's very easy to add that to the filter. You simply just click on the IP address. That adds that in as a, another filter to the actual underlying search. Maybe we don't care anymore about this particular incident. We just want to find everything that that IP address has done. And all of a sudden we see that, well, yes, we have Scott here doing several other things. He's got, you know, select going on. He's got a delete going on. So now we want to start to look at, well, what happened outside of this time frame? Right now we're looking at a very small slice of time. You know, maybe I want to go back and open that up and look at what happened over the entire day or over the entire week or whatever it happens to be. And we'll just take a few hours here in this particular example. But you'll go back and see, okay, well, not only is, uh, you know, Scott logging into the database and doing these classic things, but he's trying to log in as other users as well and failing. So you can see a bunch of authentication failures when this particular machine, probably still fell upon it at that point in time, trying to log in as Jane Doe and John Smith. So the system, by pulling all that information together, allows you to very quickly get down to the forensic level of seeing what's going on and building a case against a given incident as you're starting to work through it. That shows you a, a quick introduction to the uh, security intelligence platform. Um, and again, this is uh, the Curator Sim product along with the Risk Manager product. Thank you very much.